I'm Stephen Ben Danoon with Danoon Institute of Biblical Research. Live here in Jerusalem, I'm actually uh, on top of David's tomb, uh, also the, known as the last, uh, the roof of the Last uh, Supper, where Yeshua had his Last Supper. Of course, we know the building's not nowhere near old enough to be that, but on the very bottom floor, it's where it's believed that David, King David, was buried. But I came here because I wanted to share a message with you. And a message I think that you may find interesting, one that certainly got my attention. And, um, and of course, the very place I'm in is kind of timely for it as well. Um, I don't know if the wind's blowing in the volume. I can see the camera shaking, and I'm even behind a, uh, a dome here to try to help protect me from the wind here. So hopefully everything will go good here. Anyway, God bless you and God bless every of those believers all around the world. We know that you tune in from all over the world. And uh, it's just a pleasure to get to speak with you today. And Shabbat Shalom from Israel. Um, I'm taking you to Second Chronicles, the 30th chapter, and I want to begin with the 14th verse and read to you here. And they arose and took away the altars that were in Jerusalem, and all the altars for incense took they away and cast them into the brook of Kidron. And by the way, and behind me is the Kidron Valley. It's one of the reasons why I chose to be here. And of course, all around me are altars into Baal where they burn incense, whether they be mosques or whether they be Catholic churches or whatever they might be, they're here burning incense to Baal. Now, I know there's true believers, true Christians that have churches, and they do believe that the same God that the, uh, the, the God of Israel, they serve that same God as well. They believe that Yeshua was the very Son of God, something I believe as well. But that's different from the fact of the Baal worship that goes on here. But let me share some more with you. It's very interesting. It's not so much uh, a hit on those that profess Christianity, but this happens to show you just how far the blood of Christ can go. Then they killed the Passover on the 14th day of the second month, and the priests and the Levites were ashamed and sanctified themselves and brought in the burnt offerings into the house of the Lord. And they stood in their place after their manner, according to the law of Moses. And the man of God, the priests, sprinkled the blood which they received of the hand of the Levites. For there were many in the congregation that were not sanctified, Therefore the Levites had the charge of the killing of the Passover for everyone that was not clean to sanctify them unto the Lord. Now I want you to really think about that right there. The Levites had the charge to sanctify the people. And it was no different on a hill just to my right shoulder, not too far from here on the opposite side of the city here, where they also offered unto the Romans to kill the sacrifice, Christ Yeshua. For there were, <clears throat> for a multitude of people, verse 18, even many of Ephraim and Manasseh, Ishkar and Zebulun, had not cleansed themselves, yet did they eat the Passover, otherwise that, then, then it was written, but Hezekiah prayed for them, saying, the good Lord pardon every one. These are names from the house of Israel who was not even here during the time that the Passover lamb, Yeshua, was being offered. And here we see a beautiful parallel right here in the Second Chronicles. And Hezekiah asked for pardoning mercy for them because they were not sanctified. They weren't cleansed properly. You see, the house of Israel was never here when Yeshua was offered. And neither were the Jews that are here today. They were not here. Our forefathers were here, yes, so we have not been cleansed properly unless we've accepted the blood of Yeshua as an atonement for our sins. And that's exactly, exactly, as a, in, in, a, in a prefigure here we're seeing in 2 Chronicles chapter 30 here. So we go on to verse 19, and they, and they prepareth his heart to seek, excuse me, that prepareth his heart, let me go back to verse 18, for a multitude of the people, even many, Ephraim, Manasseh, Ishkar, Zebulun, had not cleansed themselves, yet did they eat the Passover, otherwise than it was written, but Hezekiah prayed for them, saying, the good Lord pardon every one, that prepareth his heart to seek God, the Lord God of his fathers, 
though he be not cleansed according to the purification of the sanctuary. And the Lord hearkened to Hezekiah and healed the people. Imagine that. Imagine that. They weren't cleansed. They hadn't sanctified themselves according to the correct way. Just like what we have to look at when Yeshua, who gave his life for the people here, he has he paid the way. He is the sacrifice. But many of the people, the Jews, have not been cleansed. But when they seek the Lord, see, verse 19, that prepare this heart to seek God. Here's your Zechariah 12 coming in. Here's where they will look upon him whom they've whom they pierced, and they will mourn for him as one that mourneth for his only son. But not only the house of Israel that was the it's it's gosh. I get excited when I think about this because you have to understand the, the Bible is so perfect. In Zechariah 12, Zechariah the prophet talks about how that the house of David, the house, house of Nathan, the house of Levi, the house of uh, 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 Shemai, and the families that had remained, they would actually return and they would be the ones to recognize the one whom they pierced, which every one of these are from the tribe of Judah, or the house of Judah. Nate, David and, and Nathaniel are from the house of Ju, Ju, uh, tribe of Judah. Uh, we also have uh, from the uh, uh, Shemai, who is a Benjamite, of course the Levites, and the families that remained, which were the Samaritans. You see what I'm saying? They are here now. That's what the Jews that are here in Israel now, for what? Because they are getting they're about to recognize the Messiah whom that they had rejected and they have to that has to be taken care of first but then in Chronicles chapter 30 here we find that also they will recognize him and of course what what our forefathers did 2,000 years ago in offering up Christ as a sacrifice has paved the way and Hezekiah as a type of Christ right there said God pardoned them and God hearkened unto him and pardoned them and Hezekiah begins to talk about, they begin to talk about all the tribes that, that were part of the house of Israel. It's incredible, incredible. The mercy of God and his amazing mercy and, and clearly the scripture showing both, both houses, the house of Israel and the house of Judah, recognize and accepting the atonement that is to be offered. Let me conclude in this beginning in verse 20, and the Lord hearkened to Hezekiah and healed the people and the children of Israel that were present at Jerusalem, kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with great gladness and the Levites and the priests praised the Lord day by day, singing with loud instruments unto the Lord. And Hezekiah spake comfortably unto all the Levites that taught the good knowledge of the Lord and they did eat throughout the feast seven days offering peace offerings and making confession to the Lord God of their fathers even the Levites confessing absolutely amazing astonishing the word of God God bless you we love you and pray for us we really need your prayers we have a tremendous uh, task ahead of us in order to be able to bring messages from Israel on a regular basis uh, I won't go into all the details that, behind that, but there's a lot of things that we're having to do. It's a very costly endeavor to be able to be in this part of the world. And we just ask that you would remember us and your prayers, more importantly, your prayers in anything. And that if God would lay on your heart to support this ministry, we definitely need it and thank you for it. God bless you from Israel. I'm Stephen Vindanen. Shalom.